Taffer gifted this bar a new draft beer system that cost $125,000. And don't even get me started on the rest of the renovations that we're gonna cover today. Anyway, John Taffer's job isn't easy. Trying to save bars that are struggling to stay afloat in a highly competitive industry is quite challenging. It takes a lot of patience, resilience, and determination to set things right. We've seen Taffer restore entire bars from the interior to bringing in new POS systems to new television sets and more. It's quite fascinating to see a failing bar turn into a money-making machine. But the most important thing you need to do this is money. Bar Rescue has spent thousands of dollars restoring bars over the years, but none were like the one we're going to discuss today. In the fourth season, we got to meet a man who got into the bar industry after a successful career in commercial contracting. Richard Ramos used his entire life savings of over $250,000 to buy the Los Angeles Brewing Company in 2011. Ramos's dream had finally come true and it was actualized in the historic Chapman Building. It became a newly renovated bar in downtown Los Angeles. He believed that it was the perfect opportunity since being situated downtown meant more customers were going to pour in. And just as he expected, Ramos put every bit of his time and effort into scaling the business and it immediately took off. The bar set itself apart with its 100 tap beer system. Over the first few months, it was easily reaping over $2 million in annual revenue. Now that's what I call a success. But here's the big twist. Ramos bought the bar for $250,000 after going through a dispute concerning the ownership. And because of this, he decided to manage the bar by himself. For someone who was so new to the industry, that was quite a risky move. This begs the question, did Ramos make the right call? Now, do you remember that dispute that I just mentioned? It wasn't friendly on Ramos's bank account. He had spent quite a lot of money on legal fees and soon became broke. This meant one thing and one thing only, that Ramos would start having to cut corners at the bar. Ramos fired everybody on board, which meant that all of his trained staff was asked to leave. But he did have to replace them obviously, so he decided to employ his family. This was his first mistake. But he didn't stop there. Ramos made the worst decision by cutting down on the selection of beer, which was the main attraction of the bar up until then. Ironically, the brewing company didn't even make its own beer anymore. As a result, the sales soon slumped and the bar started to lose over $15,000 every month. What's more, Ramos was now a million dollars in debt. But Ramos was confident in his skills. After all, he did buy a bar that was doing well, so what could go wrong? So to keep it up and running, he tried to cover his losses by taking from his family's architecture firm. Now, it's not hard to guess how this all turned out. Working with family in business almost never does anyone good. And just as we expected, there was some friction. Ramos's nephew, who by the way was the manager at the bar, blamed his uncle's stubbornness for the bar's failure. According to him and many others, the bar was better off being closed. Ramos's inexperience coupled with his overconfidence just wasn't helping. On the other hand, Ramos believed that his bar was a dream worth chasing. All Ramos wanted was for his bar to succeed since everything including his family were on the line. Backed up in a corner, Ramos was forced to call out to Taffer for some help. I wanted to take full control of it because I'm a smart A lot of the people that used to come here, they see the taps down, some people just walk out. We don't know anything about the bar industry. Right now, I think the best move for us to do is to sell a bar. But before we get into more details, let me fill you in on the location of the bar. Since the recession in the 1970s, the Broadway Theater District had lost its charm. It was this way for about five decades. Now, that's a really long time. The economic recession caused so many businesses to shut down during this period. But of course, the city decided to do something about it and came up with a plan to revamp the district. Thankfully, things turned around for the once forgotten avenue. After the 10-year revival plan drafted in 2008, Broadway has become a trendy nightlife spot with successful businesses. They average over $300 of revenue per square foot. And the only bar that was struggling there was the Los Angeles Brewing Company. So later on, Taffer arrived to do some recon. This time, he was joined by Maria Menounos, a celebrity TV host and a longtime citizen of Los Angeles. Menounos had quite the experience with the city and was familiar with the growing nightlife scenes around the district. The bar, sitting on over 7,000 square feet, was quite the establishment. But with 80% of its tap system missing, there was no way to attract any customers. Taffer set up some surveillance cameras throughout the entire bar and everything he saw through them disappointed him. 
The bar was almost completely empty during the surveillance, and Taffer explained to Monunos why it would be very difficult to rescue this bar. His primary reason was the sheer size of the bar, and the other issue was beating the $300 per square foot average that almost all the other places on the block made. Taffer wanted to bring this bar to its former glory, but it was a daunting task. The empty bar, which had no customers, meant only one thing. The staff wasn't in action, and the business wasn't running. Ramos and his nephew were even seen arguing about whether or not to sell the bar during the surveillance. The episode took a turn when Taffer decided to do the recon himself with the help of Manunos. But Taffer had quite the devious plan. He basically explained that the true recon team wasn't them, but another group would enter the bar while the rest of the staff would be focused on Taffer. That's what the bar genius is all about. He thinks outside the box. Once inside, Taffer was served by the head bartender, Israel, and the bar genius wasted no time in questioning him. Meanwhile, John and Jason, Taffer's actual recon crew, were already seated at the bar. Israel fumbled to answer Taffer when asked about them serving pre-made beer. What's more, the 100-tap beer system now apparently had a mere 18 beers on tap. After returning a beer with no foam head, Manunos' first sip of the beer caught her off guard. The beer was so bitter that she said it was the nastiest thing she's ever tasted. The two of them then headed to the kitchen since Taffer dismissed the food that was served to him. He didn't even want to taste it because his chicken wings looked dark and dry. After making his way into the kitchen, Taffer was appalled by how they cooked their burgers and stored their condiments. Out here, they were squeezing the hell out of their burgers. Who does that? No wonder things were so dry and tasteless. While this was going on, John and Jason hadn't yet received their order, even after waiting for 12 long minutes. Taffer was so pissed about the state of the kitchen that he asked to see Ramos to give him a good earful. And all the while, the spies continued to wait after 25 minutes passed. But things were getting really intense in the kitchen. Taffer was truly enraged when he found spoiled cheese and stale meat in the kitchen. Taffer was confused and concerned for the bar since the kitchen was a complete mess. I mean, come on. The hired cook Monica didn't even know how to cook properly. If that's what cutting costs gets you, then I side with Ramos' nephew. This bar is better closed. When the burger was finally served to the real recon team, this is how it turned out. That's awful. Oh, it's awful. Look at this, guys. This burger is raw. This is your burger. Oh my god. This is when Taffer decided to shut the bar down and call for a staff meeting. After the initial meeting, Taffer came in the next day to get to know Ramos and his employees a little better. Ramos, who habitually used his family's architectural firm's money to keep his business running, truly believed that he had the capability of running a bar. This was with no experience, by the way. Contrary to this, his staff believed that the bar should be shut down since the debt was piling on with no progress being made. You invested in a business you know nothing about. He wants to control everything, but he can't. Your family wants to sell this bar. What are you doing about it? I've been working my ass off every day in this place. Doing nothing. For the rescue, Taffer brought in Kevin Bloodsoe, a professional chef who runs a barbecue joint that won numerous awards for its quality. Bloodsoe was enlisted to turn the kitchen around, and as for the beer, Neil White, an annual judge for the Great American Beer Festival, was brought in. With two pros in the house, everybody was hoping to turn things around since this was their last chance at redemption. While White examined the taps, he found that they hadn't been cleaned in years. When he asked Ramos about it, he claimed that they were, even though he never verified that. Following that, Taffer, White, and Ramos headed out to the kegs to check the pipes out. And to their surprise, they found mold around the pipes that were being fed directly to customers. The trio headed out to the kitchen and noticed that the fryers hadn't been cleaned, even though Ramos claimed that they were again. When Jeff Bledsoe scraped the bottom of the fryer, this is what he found. Oh! The worst I've ever seen. That's bad. Be responsible for Christ's sakes! This is when Taffer was done with Ramos' lies, and after being caught red handed, Ramos was speechless. Ramos was immediately put to work and was asked to clean the gunk out of the fryer. While all of this was going on, White trained the bar staff on beer etiquette. The staff were taught the basics from how the beer tap system works to the specific glasses they have to be poured in. This cleared up a lot of confusion for the staff, who were more than grateful to have a true brewmeister helping them out. On the other hand, Chef Bloodsoe turned Ramos' perspective around after teaching him how to really cook. He managed to teach Ramos how to make decent fried chicken, and the owner seemed really happy with the results. By the end of the training, it was almost time for the stress test. So, would they come out victorious, or would they collapse under the intense pressure? I'm dying to find out. Soon, the doors were thrown open, and the customers started pouring in. 
Ramos was ready to knock this challenge out of the water and everything seemed to be in order. The kitchen was running smoothly and the bar was churning out drinks like never before. Things were off to such a great start that the head bartender, Israel, was complimented by Taffer. While things were going well, the first domino to fall was when the taps mysteriously stopped pouring. The customers were obviously frustrated and people started to boo the bartenders. The confused bartenders tried to keep the crowd calm while Ramos checked out the problem. This is when Ramos realized that the gas cylinder that should be pumping out beer was running empty. That's when the second domino fell and the bar had to shut down since they didn't have any more beer to serve. What's going on? It says right here that it's low. Do you have a backup tank? You've been running on this nitrogen with a backup. Get another backup. We can't sell one beer. I don't have nitrogen. Where do I get nitrogen from? You load it. Well, that's a good day gone ugly. Taffer was forced to shut down the bar once again and was now questioning whether or not the bar should continue to stay open at all. Everybody was fed up with Ramos' incompetency and Taffer would have to come in once again in order to fix this bar. Looks like that's gonna cost Taffer and his crew quite the sum. After brainstorming for ideas, Taffer once again approached Ramos with a proposal to invest or disinvest in his bar. The choices were clear and Ramos finally made the first smart decision to step down from the managerial position. He would allow Taffer to train and appoint a new general manager. For the time being, Israel was chosen for the post on account of his exemplary show of bartending the other night. To seal the deal, Taffer made an announcement that blew everyone's minds. Taffer decided that the Los Angeles Brewing Company should really be a brewery. And for this to happen, he arranged to install a brewery within the bar with money from his own pocket. I'm gonna turn the Los Angeles Brewing Company into a brewery. The most expensive bar rescue I have ever done. This is quite the turnaround for a miserably failing bar, huh? And it looked like things were gonna be fine from here on out. Or would it be? Taffer planned to turn the bar into a full-fledged historical brewery. This meant that the bartenders weren't only going to be serving beer, but they were also going to speak to their patrons about the beer. This would require a lot more training, but White was on it. As the training began, the kitchen also had to be revamped in order to fit Taffer's new vision. The all-new beer meant that the menu would have to change as well. Jeff Bledsoe placed Abel, Ramos' nephew, as the kitchen manager. Meanwhile, Taffer was busy bringing in equipment for the new brewing system, and this is what he claimed. Taffer tried to create a brand new image with this new setup and hoped to create a solid brand out of the bar. His vision was for the family to regret thinking about selling the place. The time was finally here, and the new version of the Los Angeles Brewing Company was relaunched as the LA Brew Co. Taffer even went as far as to put up a whole new sign for the bar that was bright and flashy. On the inside, the bar was fitted with the finest equipment for brewing, and the entire bar was transformed into a modern retro-style location. This was indeed an upgrade, and the entire staff was shocked to see the new and improved LA Brew Co. And guess what else is newer, better, and longer? My videos! So if you enjoy, be sure to drop a massive like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. I put a lot of effort into making these videos for you. So if you want more to come, be sure to comment any suggestions for future videos down below. I read all of your comments because I appreciate you. Anyway, this transformation not only let the failing bar open up with a new face, but it also opened up the doors for new opportunities. I got smart brew, computerized brewing system. It produces the beer all by computer control. I got wood snap to do beautiful wood graphics. Now they could experiment with their beers and attract customers to their once dull business. This makes me wonder, what has Taffer not thought of? He not only managed to save the bar, but also set up a safety net for the bar in case of an emergency. This was quite the statement that Taffer made while renovating this bar. Although the expense was insurmountable, Taffer's love for bars and his ability to shine in this field is what makes him so selfless. Unfortunately, Taffer's efforts weren't for the best since a month later, the bar lost its liquor license and Ramos finally decided to put it up for sale. After all that was done, could you imagine what Taffer must be feeling? Sadly, it was a wasted effort and a huge liability to the bar rescue's bank account. The bar was put up for sale for $650,000, which is a humiliating price for an establishment that had so much work and effort put into it. And this makes the Los Angeles Brewing Company not only the most expensive renovation in bar rescue history, but also the most wasted effort in rescuing any bar by Taffer and his team. Taffer was so annoyed that in an interview, he said, It was the most expensive remodel I've ever done because this place was so large. But you know what really gets me? They never used the draft beer system once. They never even turned it on. But the fact of the matter is I gave these guys every button. All they had to do was push them. And the beer system was idiot proof. The draft beer system, smart brew it was called. You have to really be an idiot to not use it. What do you think went wrong? 
They had all that they needed, beer, food, an upgraded interior, and the perfect neighborhood. Why did Ramos give that all up? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, guys.